Hey everybody, welcome to Magic Orthodoxy. My name's David and this is a deck review. Actually, it's kind of a, a mega deck review because we're gonna look at four different decks. Um, I chose red because red's um, my favorite color deck. And we're gonna look at four decks, kind of like four cornerstones of the United States Playing Card Company. Uh, if you don't know, the United States Playing Card Company uh, was founded in 1867 uh, as Russell, Morgan, and Company. It was a printing company. And the playing card business uh, that they ran was just so successful that it just kind of spun off into its own separate business. And then in 1894, it just became known as the United States Playing Card Company. Uh, and since then, Bicycle, or as most people call it, uh, has purchased most of its competitors. And that's kind of what we're going to look at today. Um, their signature deck, of course, is the Bicycle Riderback. Um, collectors and card enthusiasts uh, recognize this as the 808 deck. And you can see that in the last three digits of the PAX UPC. Um, this is their standard deck of cards, and they are perhaps the most recognized card backs in the entire world, um, which is why whenever magicians ask uh, me questions about, well, what deck should I use to perform magic, I always say to use bicycle rider backs. Uh, they, just, um, they just come across as, like I said, the most easily recognizable deck, and most people don't suspect anything when they see a pack of riders um, come out. In addition to that, it's also very easy to find um, gaff cards that already come and are made up um, from bicycle rider backs. Um, the backs themselves uh, have the, the man on the bicycle, as do a lot of uh, United States Playing Card Company uh, cards. They're, they became popular because it's said that in the time when they were released, just bicycles in general were, were just very popular, and so people were sticking bicycle logos on just about everything, and so things with a bicycle on them sold. And so um, that's kind of how their popularity took off. Their Ace of Spades looks like that. And then they basically have just, you know, two jokers of, a, of, their, of their recognizable king riding a bike. And you have the standard joker, which is just the full face there, and then you have something that they call the guarantee joker, which uh, talks a little bit about um, how they guarantee their cards. Other than that, I think the faces are pretty standard and recognizable um, by most people. There's not really a lot to go into that. Let's take a look at another deck, the Tally Ho Fan Back Number 9. This is the Tally Ho Fan Back uh, Number 9 deck. Um, Tally Ho's are actually released in two different types. Uh, they have a Fan Back that looks like this, and then they have another type that's called the Circle Back. Um, the, they, these are made from the United States Playing Card Company's um, standard playing cards. Uh, their stock is simply called Tally Ho Stock, and their finish is called Linoid Finish. Uh, as opposed to the Bicycle brand, uh, they are released on something called an Air Cushion Finish. Uh, Linoid is probably on par with other finishes like Cambric and, and Airflow, just in my opinion. Now, the phrase Tally Ho, it's largely a British phrase, and it's used in fox hunting and then other forms of hunting. Uh, like when uh, the hounds are chasing after the prey, uh, the men who are riding on the horses, they would shout Tally Ho when they saw the prey. And that is kind of reflected in the joker of this um, rider with a whip. Uh, interestingly enough, Tally Ho's only come with one joker. Uh, their faces are pretty much standard um, on par with bikes. And the back design looks like this. And then their uh, Ace of Spades is probably the most beautiful of the four decks. And it's very ornate. And uh, down at the bottom, it says A. Doherty. And in some of my other videos, I explain um, the meaning behind the Tally Ho decks. Um, Tally Ho's are just known to be a better quality and having uh, just a more longevity than the standard bicycle deck. And their stylish back design is often preferred by many cardists and a lot of card flourishers. Um, apart from, like I said, the Ace of Spades and their Jokers, the, standard, the faces are standard and they're going to be almost identical uh, with a bike brand deck. This stock is stiffer than the 808s, but it, but it doesn't seem uh, thicker than, a, than an 808 deck. There's kind of like a dimple pattern common in most USPC decks, and it is present here as well. And, and while I can't, I personally can't feel the difference between a linoid finish of the Tally Ho and the air cushion finish of the 808s, 
it does seem to have um, a different characteristics in handling. Overall, um, these cards, the deck itself, comes in, if you measure it with a caliper, two cards thinner. Um, and uh, like I said, it is a, a favorite among magicians, and particularly it was the favorite of Di Vernon. Overall, um, you're going to get a higher quality deck with the Tally Host than with a standard 8 to 8 deck. Another one of the United States Playing Card Company's cornerstone decks is the Aladdins, or the 1001s. Um, these decks come in two different kinds of finishes. You can get this deck in a smooth finish and an airflow finish. Smooth might be confusing, but it, you shouldn't confuse it with generic cards. You know, sometimes you'll see a box of generic cards that'll say smooth finish, and what that really means uh, is garbage. But <laughs> the, this is not that same uh, smooth finish. In fact, if you pull these uh, cards out of the box for the very first time, they feel very slick. Um, Aladdin's, um, their smooth finish is, is kind of on par with um, Aviators, uh, if you've ever felt those, and, 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 and kind of Air Cushion too, I think, which is the same as the 808s. Um, the reason for the stiffness and the slickness of these cards is because actually these cards are not generally released um, locally. They're more of a national division of the United States Playing Card Company, and you'll see Aladdin's more overseas. These cards were actually designed to withstand the constant uh, heat and humidity of uh, countries like Singapore. Um, the back design is um, like four palm fronds surrounding a, a single uh, four-point flower. And uh, they're very simple in design. They have a very uh, poker-esque uh, card feel to them. The Aladdins have four jokers. Now, I I found that um, similar with a few people, and then Interestingly enough, in talking to some other people, they've told me that their deck of Aladdin's only came with two jokers. So I can't really explain why uh, some come with uh, what they do. Maybe, maybe it has to do with the finish. I don't know. I got the smooth finish deck, and that came with four jokers, so you might want to uh, check that out and see. Uh, this joker is really confusing to me, and actually, I did a lot of research to, to find out some story about this, and I, I couldn't find anything. In fact, I even talked to the president of a... Uh, of, uh, a world-renowned collector's club that actually collects uh, different types of card jokers, and even he didn't know the answer. Uh, the joker is a bunny rabbit <laughs> breaking out of an Easter egg uh, with two tiny little elves um, surrounding him. It, it must have something to do with children's stories, or it could have even been a political satire um, from way back when this deck was released in the 1880s, but I, I, I think that story, whatever it was, has kind of been uh, lost to time. The Ace of Spades on the Aladdin is a lamp, uh, of course, because of the story of Aladdin, but um, it also says at the top there, the National Card Company of Indianapolis. That's because the National Card Company was actually the first release of the Aladdin deck, and that's one of the things I like about the United States Playing Card Company. Even when they purchase other decks, they try to stay true to how the deck first looked, at least in design as far as the Ace of Spades and the Jokers. Now, the card stock on these is a little bit stiffer again than the 808s. In fact, its stiffness is kind of rivaled by the Tally Hose, which we just looked at. Um, the card finish is linen, but it doesn't have any dimpling. Um, a true linen finish, they haven't really been made um, for at least four decades. Uh, if you really want to know uh, what an original linen finish was, that process involved using actual rollers made from linen. Um, it was uh, a practice that's been kind of long done away with, at least in America. Um, there is some texture added to this finish, likely to add some kind of airflow to the uh, cards when they glide, but it doesn't appear to be in any kind of pattern. Um, as these decks age, there is some trouble with um, fanning, but overall, Again, this deck is a little thinner uh, than the, the 808s, and it is a stronger deck. Um, so I, I, I do like the stiffness of this and, and how these decks will outlast an 808 deck. Uh, I just don't love the back design as much as I love the 808s, so the Aladdins are not one of my preferred decks. But I do like them as far as uh, collectors go. The last deck we're going to look at today is the Arco deck, or the 501s. 
um, uh, produced by the Arrow Playing Card Company between the 1920s and 1935. Um, this company was later bought out by the United States Playing Card Company um, in 1987. These cards have a plastic coated finish. These cards are very thin, they're lightweight, they're very flexible, and, and they're very snappy. Um, and it makes this deck kind of a, a favorite among magicians. Uh, people like Ricky Smith, Tony Chang, Paul Wilson, they all like Arco decks. Um, the back design is very ornate, it's very elaborate, and there's a lot going on in there. Uh, there have been stories that um, the Arcos used to be a really high quality deck. Um, you talk to uh, card collectors and enthusiasts and they'll say, oh yeah, Arcos, back in the day they used to be the best, way before they were bought out by United States Playing Card Company. I've heard those rumors, but I've never actually heard them from somebody who's held an original Arco deck in their hands. I, I think that's just kind of become the legend, and I think like any legend, those stories get embellished over time. Um, with Arcos, the thing I'm most impressed by is, is how long Arcos keep that kind of new deck feel. Um, even after weeks of play, um, you could take a brand new deck of Arcos and, and then your, your, you know, your, your used deck, and, and it's really hard to tell which one's which. Um, even in uh, really humid weather, which is a, a really neat factor uh, when you talk about cards and whether they start clumping together, um, Arcos kind of retain that newness that um, some of the cheaper decks don't, um, don't take on. Um, if you look at some of the, the, Ace of, the Ace of Spades and the Jokers, you'll see that they actually kind of look familiar to you. These Jokers are seen in a lot of um, department store and grocery store uh, generic brands of cards, and that's because Arco, um, that, their face design is used um, a lot in generic decks. Um, so that's why the, the Joker there, and, of course, and this Ace of Spades, um, does look familiar to you. Uh, you'll see them in people's homes all the time. And then when, of course, when you hear card reviewers say that the card deck comes with uh, court cards that have Arco faces, this is what they mean. They mean that they come from the Arco deck. And so the court cards, the faces and the body designs, they're just a little larger. They take up a little bit more of the space, and, and, uh, the graphic-wise, on, on the face of the cards. And, and here's the thing. Even though um, I've said that the Arcos and the Aladdins and the Tally Hose, they're, they're a little thicker and they have a little bit better finish and, and they do last longer than the 808 deck, the, the thing is for me is that the 808 decks are just more readily available and they're way more familiar. So if I can go out and buy an 808 deck for $2.88 and I know I can get it at any grocery store or any department store, that's the deck that I'm just more, uh, just more ready to use and the deck that I'm more familiar with and more comfortable with. Uh, I, I do like the other three decks, but as a collector, they'll just be collector's cards to be. Um, they won't be cards that I'll use in actual play. They're, they are harder to find, and they do tend to run a little bit more. So that's my deck reviews for these four decks. Um, be sure to check them out, and be sure to come back. Subscribe to my channel, and you'll always get updates about new and upcoming decks. Thanks.